How you guys doing? Sad state of affairs in this segment of Biker News. Uh, the Mongols have lost members in a biker bar shooting in Oklahoma. But what's even worse is I'm going to show you how the media and law enforcement they work hand in hand to make a narrative that actually isn't true. Wait till you guys see this one. It's insanity, man. Like I said in a segment a while ago, it's like bikers, especially club guys, they're like subhuman to these people. What they did, though, in some of these media reports is just god awful and then of course we have the good stuff uh coming up today we're gonna go into that first as well as a wall of shame let's get this show on the road to spread some holiday cheer for children in need of toys this holiday season. Corporate Hospitality Housing and Shotgun Law Enforcement Motorcycle Club hosted their first Toys, and to toys for Tots event right here in Odessa. Those who donated were giving a free meal and among those who donated were the Texas chapters of the Shotgun Motorcycle Club. A spokesperson from Corporate Hospitality was exp excited to see the West Texans come together for a great cause. It's really exciting to see, um, you know, everyone just donate all these toys. Um, you know, again, we're really appreciative and we hope that, you know, we can bring smile to, um, you know, all the children that um, hopefully will receive these beautiful toys. If you would like to set up your Toys for Tots event this holiday season, we'll provide details on who to contact on CBS7.com. For a thunder in front of the TV station this morning. Some members of the U.S. Military Vets Motorcycle Club rolled in with some holiday cheer. They were bringing a donation for communities caring at Christmas. Now, this is the fourth year. In fact, the Pensacola Crossbones chapter has held their poker runs for the communities caring children. For them, it's a ride with a purpose that brought in over $2,500 and a load of toys. Honor the privilege to reach out to the community uh, at the at the holidays during Christmas and be able to uh, pay it forward, give back some, and um, and be able to spread the love. Cameron says as proudly as they serve their country, the members are just as proud to continue serving the community. All right, good stuff right there. Good stuff. Uh, and they say I'm not all inclusive, but yeah, I'm inclusive. You know what? I'm not going to take away from what people do for the community and stuff. Maybe I'm a little irritated because our main story coming up right now and how the media law enforcement handled it. I'm going to give you a video right now covering what happened. And then I'm actually going to go into some details where you can see the flip that they're trying to do and by the way i was i'm gonna be at next video was able to figure out this lag and stuff uh when i'm showing you this stuff here we've never had a double homicide on average bartlesville police say they see one homicide a year but tonight they are dealing with a double homicide case 51 year old gregory rogers is the accused shooter police say he turned himself into tulsa county jail this morning news channel H jeff morgan reports on the shock from the city dealing with their third and fourth homicide of the year Monday night, within a few minutes, Bartlesville had more homicides than its average the last 10 years and the first double homicide of police chief Tracy Roll's tenure. And so it's very odd, uh, very, uh, very out of the ordinary for a community like, like Bartlesville. Police say it started with a fight inside Kickstand Saloon. Gregory Rogers allegedly shot Austin Standiford and Van Parson, then ran away. He ran from the scene, according to police. Officers found the two victims in the bar, and they were sent to the hospital where they died. The news shocked Bartlesville throughout the night. Michelle Hope showed up to the bar this morning, hoping to see if her friends who were there last night were okay. Her friends weren't the victims last night, but she was still shocked by the news. Pretty hurt. I mean, Bartlesville is not like this. It's never like this. We're always calm. I mean, that bar is ran by some amazing people. 
Chief Rolls says there are still details they're working out, and they're going over the surveillance video from the bar. Uh, we're still working through. There's a lot of witnesses that we have to talk to, a lot of uh, things that our, our detectives are actively working on to, to get the real story behind not only how it happened, but why it happened as well. Okay. That is a look at one of the ways the story was coming out in the media. But I always wonder why the media just can't present the facts and let everybody else decide. No, they have to have some kind of spin. And this is especially true when it comes to clubs. We all know that. Shit, we've seen it. I've experienced it. This story, though, is messed up. I want to take you to one of the original reporting on this deal, and you'll see where I'm coming from. Out of News Channel 8, ABC. Two men killed at uh, the bar identified. And the suspect was Gregory Rogers. Uh, they say he's from uh, Tulsa, turned himself in. Uh, the victims have been identified as 41-year-old Austin uh, Stanford uh, from Bartlesville and 28-year-old Alan Van Parson. It goes into their averages like they did in the deal. How they were taken into the hospital and stuff like that. Now, here's what's got me. Police say the victims were likely affiliated with a biker gang. Affiliated with a biker gang. So in this piece right here, they are trying to have you believe that this was a fight between clubs and i guarantee that's what everybody was thinking after hearing all this is well wait a second this is probably club stuff that's where you're wrong hidden in a different publication tulsa world Gregory Rogers, 51, was developed as a suspect in the case after Bartlesville police responded to a call that shots had been fired around 8.30 p.m. at Kickstand Saloon. Here it is. There they found two bar employees who had been shot. Police learned that the altercation had arisen at the bar, which builds itself as Oklahoma's destination for bikers from all walks of life. They were employees. That's the one publication I could find that actually had something like that in there. All the rest of the papers, most of them anyway, were talking about how they were affiliated with a gang trying to make it seem like this was club related when in fact it wasn't. Do you see the big spin that they put on this story? And this is what they do with citizens to get them against clubs. I guarantee you the cops were on that. And I guarantee you they were in with the media on this one. Because who else uses the word gang? Cops. I don't know about you, but that was some of the worst reporting I've seen on anything. Where That's the thing you got to understand. You got to dig into all this material to find out what's going on. Even the stories that we cover, we always put the links in our show notes. Go there. Research the story from other sources because maybe you guys might catch something. Send it back to me where we can get the whole truth out there. 
but it takes everybody working together on something like that. But I guarantee if I didn't bring that up, that they were employees of the bar. Everybody would have been going on and saying, well, wait a second. Who's fighting who now? When in fact, it was one guy, non-club affiliated, that did the shooting. As far as we can tell in the papers. Just saying, let me know what you guys think in the comment section. After that one, I want to do another good one here before Wall of Shame, because that one's got me going. A uh, local motorcycle club to deliver meals to the elderly. A uh, local motorcycle enthusiast with the Saints MC of Lincoln County are gearing up to deliver meals to the elderly without family or resources for Christmas dinner. Members of the club are asking for the public's help in identifying those in need. The tradition of cooking and delivering Christmas Day meals to the elderly began with the Curray Motorcycle Club about 18 years ago since the tradition began. The numbers have continued to grow. Uh, the club welcomes uh, food, cash, and time. You can call uh, Ivy, I guess, at 251-421-0621. Good stuff right there. Needed that right after that freaking Mongol story. I can't believe that they do that kind of crap still. Unbelievable. Up to spread some holidays. Officer finding himself on the, on the other man, side, side of the wall after getting arrested over the weekend. Witnesses say the officer threatened to kill someone during a, uh, a wrestling tournament over the weekend. Leanne's uh, local tense, Leanne Motorhorn, is live now in North Miami with the details for us. Leanne. So at this point, exactly what set this off-duty officer off is still a mystery, but we do know that the entire incident was captured on school surveillance camera. Miami-Dade police officer Guillermo Cuba is charged with aggravated assault with a firearm, battery on an official employee, and bringing a firearm to school property. Miami-Dade schools police say the 50-year-old pushed and threatened to kill someone during a wrestling match at North Miami High School. According to an arrest form, Cuba ran onto the wrestling mat, pushing victim one to the ground. The defendant was then escorted out of the gymnasium by victim one school staff. He began to shout, I'll expletive kill you repeatedly at victim one in the presence of students and spectators of the event. Upon being removed from inside the gym, the defendant approached victim one, pulled up his shirt, displaying a firearm, which was holstered on his belt. Officers then searched Cuba in the parking lot and found a Glock 43 9 millimeter handgun on him. They also say the entire incident was captured on school surveillance cameras. When I heard that, I was, I was just... Even I mess up with uh, it once in a while, and I'm always banging on Black Dragon, man. You, you know, we got a million buttons we're going through here, different transitions and stuff for these videos. And once in a while, we screw it up like me. Hey, I'm not, you know what? I'm not immune to being screwed up on some stuff. Uh, going back to that bar case, guys, do your research before... Even on my show, if you see something, go research it for yourselves. That way you can get the full story. I know in today's times, a lot of people don't have time to do that kind of stuff, and they just take it as uh, face value. But if you didn't look into this one, you would think it was a gang thing like freaking uh, these cops always go around and say, you know, they never, they have such a hard on for MCs, it's kind of ridiculous. I believe, personally, it's because they're jealous and envy, and I'm actually going to be doing a short later on about war on bikers. This is a perfect example of it. Per perfect example. 
And then, of course, we got our wall of shame that, you know, there needs to be no thoughts, man. That's self-explanatory with them. It's great seeing all the bikers do everything. And for people who say you know, all-inclusive, man, that one's hard to do, you know, at the beginning, if you know what I mean. Anyway, don't forget to download us on Roku and uh, Fire TV. Help us get to 10,000 over on Instagram. Really appreciate all the support getting us to 40. We're on our way to 50. Uh, good stuff over on YouTube. Really appreciate it. I'll talk to you guys later. Don't forget to hit the second part of this show over on the podcast platforms. Good stuff, man. Talk to you later. Adi. To the extent that pending criminal matters are discussed on this website or YouTube channel, all such charges are merely accusations, and all defendants are presumed innocent until and unless proven guilty in a court of law.